so now the weight is entirely at the bottom of the pocket and oops so I can loosen the screw and I can now get the pulley out without having any pressure yeah. without having any pressure and hopefully this uh, Mason's line is strong enough to pull it back up see if I can get this pulley to move now this pulley needs some work I can grab it with a pair of channel locks and move it so it moves it just isn't loosening up so what I plan on doing these are just rivets uh, well it's like a mandrel that they smashed over so it in order to fit into this pocket you can't just simply put a bolt through here uh, you need to use the same system they did so what I plan to do is grind carefully away the rivet so that I can push it through and see what's holding it up and uh, then I may put it back and put a little weld on it uh, or just smash it over again uh, but in the meantime we need to put this window up so I put the this uh, molding back normally you take these out from the inside by removing this trim which is already gone then removing this stop and then you can pull the window in but these windows are curved and it gets narrower as you go inside so I've had to remove it from the outside by removing this trim now with this one chain attached this window is not so heavy that it pulls down so I can just move this back and I temporarily have the uh, this molding put back and we can put it close well that's all the far further that's going to go without propping it up so we're going to leave it like that for a while and uh, I don't, my string is still on the inside I don't lose that okay so we're gonna now go work on the pulley so what I want to do here is remove this spindle or axle I think I called it a mandrel before and uh, I could use a grinder a bench grinder um, but I don't want to get this into this uh, casing here um, any more than I have to and weaken it so these are just uh, must be a mild steel like a big rivet that uh, was pounded over so I want to take out as little metal as possible and I'm using this uh, Dremel this attachment on it to grind this kind of rivet What I have here now is this little anvil and a, a circle and I'm placing this piece on and driving this through with my little hammer here and it seems to be working. So this piece pounded through easily. The pulley's in here, the pulley moves now. So it, you can see there's this all this rust and so maybe what I can do is simply use an emery cloth, clean it up, and put this back in, and uh, I don't know, either spot weld it or uh, peen it over again, and we'll see if we can get that to work. I put the axle of the pulley in the drill press, and uh, I wipe the rust off. It now. It's now shiny, so maybe it'll work. I just got this flex view for $4.88 at Walmart, so that should 
leave both of my hands free. So this thing is a casting and it does have a little corrosion inside but it's not distorted. If it was, castings are very brittle. Uh, fitting a three inch drill bit three inch. is fine. Fitting a three inch, uh, I don't know what you call it, it's like a safety pin thing. That works, I could use that, it, but it's steel. Now my genius idea is to use this stainless steel bolt to fabricate it to look like this. See, this is the original little axle or spindle. And it's not, it doesn't go through very well. Now, when I put the um, calipers on it and turn it, it's kind of glare here, you can see that it goes not at that point but on this end I'll turn it away so it doesn't glare you can see it goes well it's below 3 8 inch there let's move it up some There's this one spot where it goes up. There, right there. Right there. It's three thousandths of an inch out of round. Some stresses on this thing, I can't imagine, distorted it. So it's not the rust, it's that this is somehow out of round. Now, I'm thinking stainless steel is not going to rust, but that's really not the problem here. It's distorted, but I have stainless steel, so I'm going to try it. And it may be um, difficult to fabricate with this stuff since it doesn't oxidize readily. That makes it more difficult to cut but I'm going to try some things and see if we can get that to something like this. Well, that seemed to work out okay. We just need to make that a little smaller and then cut it to length. This is the window we're dealing with, a kind of a far away view. You can see that the thing is curved in a curved bay situation. We have this upper sash now set aside. There's the bottom of that chain. It was nailed in with two finished nails. This one, where is it? It doesn't have the little coil on there. I have this set aside down there. Now I need to get this chain here attached to this. And you can see that there's a dog there. You can see that this doesn't go in. It doesn't go inside. So I have to remove this parting bead. And the best way to do that is grab it with a pair of vice grips and just Pull it like this. I already have it loose. I already dropped a small tool almost on the top of this glass. I should have set it up and leaned it against there. These curved pieces of glass are thousands of dollars. Okay, so 
on to taking out this parting parting bead here. Generally, there's only a couple of screws in, and then I can pull. It's not too bad. Sorry for the miss aim. Now I can pull this in. I might have to remove this stop again. I already did, um, but you only need one out to remove it. So I'm going to put the camera down and grab with both hands. Well, now I know why this short piece of chain there is because this is broken. So I'm not going to have to uh, replace the chain, which means I had to open up this pocket here. They're upside down, but there's a screw, and I'll get in that pocket. So I need to set this thing somewhere so it won't go anywhere while I go inside and open up the pocket and get some chain. Okay, we have the pocket open. There's a pocket cover. All it was is one screw, and there's the weight, and the weight is suspended from the pulley up there that has the little circular uh, thing in it. So let's take this out. We cut the chain, and now uh, I'm going to pull it through the top and use this plus the other piece to measure how long that I'm going to need. Maybe a mistake to do it that way, but. The chain I'm using is heavier. I matched the length of the chain. There's the old chain laying on the ground with some scrap of this chain. And I'm going to now feed it through the top, drop it down and tie it onto the weight. I have the counterbalance attached to the new chain there is a chain with a screw in it. There's the little ring that goes in the end of the window. And I'll just pull this down all the way until the weight's all the way up and then put this ring in the edge of the window here. The pocket that receives this spring is about one hand span down. So with this weight, just slightly off the bottom, this spring should be one hand span. So they're still pulling it up to the top. Before it was down here, the weight would have bottomed, bottomed out. So I cut the chain and put it here. Now I'll just pull this down, all the way down, and uh, pin it back up there and attach it to the window. The counterweight is all the way up and uh, pin is installed. So this is the entire length of the chain. And what I'm going to do now is to use a, here's how I situated the screw. I don't want that spring coming out. And then when the chain breaks, it starts rubbing on the window or it just comes out and rubs on the window. So just one screw to keep that spring in there and uh, angled up there and we're good to go. So on this sash, this weight has always had been uh, exerting force on that chain so it, it holds it up. And this one is the one that we've been working on. So uh, when I pull the pin there, then it'll pull the window towards back in position. But I just wanted to mention during the whole process, the weight remains attached on this side so that the window really doesn't go anywhere. I just verified that the window does go all the way to the top and uh, the weight doesn't hit the bottom here before the window uh, goes up. And I'm now gonna put this parting bead and you can see there's extra, extra space in there and that's because I don't have the stop bead uh, on the inside so that lets this move. This maneuver wouldn't have been possible without the stop bead on the inside removed. There's the stop bead on the inside. I put two stainless steel 
screws in the parting stop, one at the top and one at the bottom. The one at the bottom should be uh, way out of the way of the weights and this should be out of the way of the weights because you can uh, accidentally put screws, especially the one that is in here. If this is too long, that weight will hit it and I've had that happen before. This is the replacement pulley. Here's the other one with the ends of the chains now attached to the sash like I showed earlier. Uh, this now, like with one finger, goes all the way to the top. So this bead here, I need to put that back on this side, cock it, and it will be ready to go. Earlier in the video, I kept talking about the inside stop molding. This, this is it. This one happens to be loose, and you can see these little adjustable grommet things in here, and they're screws. Now, what I did with those dirty old grommets is I put them in this jar with a little water and some barkeeper's friend and let them soak there for a long time and now I have these all shiny ready to go back in. This is the window that I replaced the pulley on up here and it's got painted shut. Here's the pulley we replaced. Here's the, the middle bead actually can kind of move it a little but because of the way these windows are built they it, it won't slide into the window because there are little I don't know if you can see it down here there's a little there's grooves that keep keep it towards the middle so anyway what I wanted to show here's this this bead that I keep talking about on the interior. And you can see I had to put toothpicks and little slivers of wood inside because these holes got wallered out from so many times that they've been into this. This piece just slips back in. And one thing to notice is that uh, we fix this so well, all you have to do is touch the, I'm not even moving the window, and it just goes up. So I'll pull it down, and with a little nudge, it just goes up. So one of the things we can do to fix that, because it could just speed up, um, I use, by the way, I use this paraffin in this I turn it like this, you can see how much I've used off these corners. And I wax, wax these slots up, sash glide slots up. But what I can do is put this piece here, I'll put this little grommet in, and like I did here, and then I'll be able to push it up against this and tighten it. So in order to do this, what I need is a drill bit. I choose a drill bit that is just as big as a shaft, but not bigger than the not bigger than the threads. So you should see the threads on either side of the shaft. And then I'll drill a pilot hole with that and uh, I have a, a thing that will screw it in fast you just pull this and oh, the safety is on here take the safety off you press this down you turn it to the right and it goes stop turn it to the left and it goes but you don't have a really good feel for what when you reach the end because it's so heavy so I have a regular screwdriver that I use. This takes two hands just to push this molding up against this 
then turn this and you can see it'll start pulling that little grommet thing into it and you can push on this to adjust how tight and then now the window doesn't just glide all the way up. So here we have all the little brand new brass screws with a little I don't know what they call it, grommet, ferrule, right? And, uh, and it is adjusted so that it's uh, up against this. We can see they drilled a hole. What they did is, or ram I? Ah, uh, yeah. They drill a hole and then they put a 16 penny nail through it whenever this thing stops working very well. And, this used to be not a very great neighborhood, but it is now a very great name. Oh, look at that, I missed one. And over here, um, the screw spun, so I put some wood glue on these three toothpicks and shoved it in there, and when I dry, I'll break them off, and put the screw in there. Okay. Okay, we're back on the outside. That's the pulley that started this whole thing. It was frozen. I have a primer, which is the gray uh, coat on here. It's latex. Then I have a bear, and I hope I get paid for saying that. Uh, lifetime warranty. That's why you, I like Porter Paints, the lifetime warranty. But bear is, uh, Home Depot is open weekends and evenings, and Porter Paint is not. Now, with the bear, they say it's lifetime warranty, but if you read on the back, it says two coats last longer, so I'm taking it that two coats is gonna give me two lifetimes. Now, I built this furring strip. You can see I left a screw here just in, in the future. If a chain breaks, this, this parting, no, I'm sorry. Here's the parting, parting strip. This was the chain that was broken that had the spring in the middle of it. Here's the parting bead. And if this pulley freezes up or the chain breaks, this stop will have to be removed. So this is a piece of, uh, well, it's furring, and what I'm working on here is putting storm windows uh, over this curved window, but you have to come out, and, and I had to design a uh, piece that would fit over that outside stop that would have to be removed to take these windows out, because in there is narrower than out here. So I have this straight edge, it's a jig, and it has to be straight across. And if I, if I put it all the way down at the bottom, that's what's required to miss. Let me see, maybe I can do that. See, it just misses that curved windowsill and that's what you need to put a, a straight window, a storm window. Now see these pieces that they have in there? I also put that little jig over that to make sure that uh, you know it's all working out. These furring pieces have to be flush with that because this is where the storm window is going to go. And you can now see these inside trim pieces that apparently they take in and out. They did it so much, the screws wallet. And look at this. They've had so many different window treatments that the wood is really thin. Well, there's a lot of, looks like Swiss cheese. Okay, so we're now I'm now putting the final coat and I have not painted you'll see some of the paints missing in some of these areas 
and the reason that is is because that's new glazing and it has to uh, get a skin on it at least and so as long as I can possibly wait is before I put any paint on that. Now I understand that you could put shellac over it and the shellac will stick to the uh, well what's in it is linseed oil and it and it sets real slow so you put shellac over it and then paint it but I have never tried that in a really long run situation and I have uh, I have time now here's a thing that you'll see I have this tape here and this tape here and uh, it serves another function. Sometimes this old glazing compound has sort of a cuticle in it, and I use this Top Gun 400 that comes from Porter Paints, and I hope I get paid for saying that, but I'm not holding my breath. Uh, I put that in there and, uh, and wipe as much as I can and what it does is it fills that up it also fills up any wrinkles under the tape and when I take it off it gives me a perfect line and the imperfections where the old caulk meets the um, in this case terracotta is sort of filled in and, uh, and when you pull the tape off you have a very fine line okay a few more comments you can see the reflection of this stained glass behind me. This house here has even more amazing stained glass. There's this window over there. We'll do a video later and showcase that. Well, anyway, I have the second bear, what is that? Lifetime warranty marquee, right? And it's the lowest luster. I don't think it's flat, but they call it satin, so it's not a dead flat. You can see there's a, a slight sheen on it. And down here, I just painted it. It's wet, so it glistens. But it won't take long for the water to flash off of that. And I'll be able to pull the tape off. On that, that's that frog tape that's supposed to create a water barrier. When the paint tries to go underneath it, it sort of dissolves a little I don't know, sticky something and keeps it the paint from migrating underneath the edges. Now I wanted to comment on, see I have, a, I put a little bit of paint on this, but it's not going to stick because this is where I keep putting the, the paraffin, the wax. And you can see this pocket here only has a little bit of old stain on it, but it's not going to see the weather because this window, uh, is going to be down. But this pocket, this glide area here is going to see the weather. But and normally you just don't put much coat. It was white and it was not going to look very good. So I, I put some of this paint that I'm using on it and that whitish on it is, is the wax. But I don't care. Uh, about that anyway it's going to have a storm over it but this is this area here is not going to be exposed to the weather this will except for not so much with the storm on it and the same it, you know with the top the one on the outside probably won't see much weather because the window will be up but let's see let's see if I can pull it down I have to move it around once in a while so that the paint doesn't stick. Right. See, that's pretty much raw wood there, but I don't mind so much because the, the window is going to be up. Uh, I can see I can touch this up a little bit now that I have that exposed. And uh, by then I'll be able to take off this frog tape masking and this what is this this is I don't know 3m exterior something or other I mentioned these screws here to not I'm not filling them 
with a bunch of paint because this if this if the chain breaks on this sash this is going to have to be removed and this is going to have to be removed after cutting the caulk that seals this to the window frame and it's so you want to be able to locate those and I might be the one that's having to replace that that sash chain which you can't see right now so this about this screw right here I got it from uh, these these are them I got them from Menards oh, I hope Menards pays me a whole boatload of money for saying that and here's these screws they're like this they are pretty substantial they have they're a T what is it a T20 dry and uh, I started using these. these are from Home Depot I don't even know if Home Depot has these but I got these at Menards these I got at Home Depot it's like a trim I don't know if you can, yeah, this is a T15, this is the next size down, I believe it's T15, and so I use these to begin with, but these are much, much more substantial, it's like, I'll come down here and pull this frog tape, which I happen to have gotten at at Menards, and I'm sure Home Depot and everybody else has it, so... I carry in my pocket now I have tape stuck all over it but I carry this razor knife in case something something pops up I don't want to have to go back and deal with it I want to deal with it right from the beginning by the way I should mention this earlier if you guys master this and I know some of you have I suggest charging calling your car dealer and find out what their shop rate is per hour and like uh, this Volkswagen dealer that I take my little bug to it's $145 an hour so that's what I peg my rate to I have 30 40 years of experience I have as many tools as a car dealer does and I bring them to their house and my insurance is more than theirs is so uh, to charge what a car dealer charges you know assuming you have a, a skill level and you know if, if you're if you don't have a whole lot of business start lower and then when you get backed up several months start increasing your what you charge people by the hour and of course the ideal is to have employees anybody wants to come work with me I'll train you and then you'll be able to go back and make that much and you know what I'm talking about the work I do is in st. Louis Missouri so and, and that's what I charge and I won't say the amount because this would video can be some years old and things will change but if you go and find out what the car dealer charges now see there's a little bit of white there but the line is perfect see some of this some of this came off and I can go back and touch that up but for the most part you know, I, I wipe this down with Top Gun 400 which you get from Porter Paint and it goes up under the tape and it, since it's clear, it fills whatever little imperfections are up underneath there and when you paint on top of it, it pulls it off in such a way that you get a really straight line even if the caulk went underneath it uh, it's clear and so you're gonna get a really clean line now see that was some 
paint that was up underneath the tape and if that annoys me it doesn't take much to go back and now this this is is a like a failure right there and I'll touch that up so let's go and see what we have here on the other side Sometimes you can see this Top Gun 400 is Kevlar reinforced, it's clear. And you can see, if you don't wipe it, you have to wipe it all the way off the yellow. Otherwise, it will, it, it's very elastic and it will wanna come off and pull the paint like that, pull the paint underneath it. You can see what's going on there. But if you have a really rough surface, let's tape it, put a clear caulk, and wipe as much off of the as much off of the uh, tape as you can. And this is that exterior plastic tape. I think it's made by 3M. I think I got it at Menards. You should pay me a lot of money for saying that. And then I can make a lot of money making videos for you. Okay, I'm gonna leave this this uh, on until I get around to, uh, until that dries. Wait, but I can take, I can take this off. I need a videographer. I'm sure you enjoy watching me struggle with this tape. You have nothing else better to do in your life. But you never know, I might say something that's going to make you a whole lot of money. There's a little imperfection right there, but this, you'll notice that the paint goes, the paint and the primer and everything should just barely seal up against the glass so the so weather doesn't get between the glass and your paint job. Let's see what we have over here. I want to make sure that point gets in. Well, it's been on here for a while, too. This, for a couple weeks, maybe, for a week, anyway. See, that paint, and this is probably an area where I put the caulk. See how rough that is? I wanted the caulk to seal between I wanted the caulk to seal between the old glazing compound and the glass. Because in some places it wasn't loose enough to be able to get it off. I did a pretty good job of wiping the excess clear caulk off. So. You, it's sealed against the glass, the paint is, and the caulk, and the primer. And that's what you want, so weather doesn't get underneath there. Okay. Here's another thing you can do. You can wet this and put it over your little painting pail. And as long as that's wet, your paintbrush won't develop, at least while it's sitting there, won't develop a skin around the outside and the paint won't develop a skin on the top uh, of the little paint pot.